welcome to um, our fifth block party. Welcome to Box of Happiness. We're really happy to see you. We said, you know, the previous block party was the last one, but, you know, we decided to uh, do another one, you know, so that we can hang out before the holidays, before the year end. So welcome to Sketching Play Lab block party. So if you're new to uh, Sketching Play Lab, uh, don't worry, we'll tell you a little bit more about what uh, we do and also a little bit of what we will be doing today as well. So if you're uh, new to Sketching Play Lab, we started this initiative in April when we all went into lockdown and we were stuck at home, uh, you know, struggling to redo the window scene over and over again. So I came uh, together with Sweeter and said, hey, why don't we, you know, set up a playground for Sketcher to hang out, to draw, to just chat, you know, and, you know, encourage each other and be of inspiration to the community as well, right? So, uh, yeah, Sweeter, just feel free to jump in if you have anything to add. Sure. And then no, we I'm just thinking it's nine months, right? And it's really funny when we did this in March. We said, let's do this. Let's see how long it lasts. Maybe a couple of weeks. And here we are, month nine, and we're looking forward to 2021. So it's quite amazing. Yeah. And then, you know, uh, please remember, you know, this is not a step one to 10 instructional uh, workshop. We're just here to play. And also know that you have full permission to play today, you know. Uh, so, you know, you don't have to worry, oh, can I do this and can I do that today? So this plot party is to celebrate you as well and to just kind of say thank you, you know, kind of spend some time, you know, uh, before the year end with you as well. All right. Anything to add, Suita? What do we do at Sketching Play Lab? No, thank you. For those of you that have been to some of these before, you know how this goes. It's just a free for all. We're all doing our thing. It seems an odd thing to do online that we're all just doing our thing and uh, we like being in a room, but somehow it works. It makes us happy. If you've never been to one of these before, it, this is really the biggest room we ever have. It's not a guided exercise. We don't We'll, we'll have some prompts and we'll maybe draw something similar, but not really. And uh, Paul and I will talk about, um, we talk about random stuff and we show some slides and we yeah. show some work. You can look at it or you can draw or you can uh, use the chat to ask questions. At some point today, yeah. we'll answer questions about yeah. just general questions you have. Yeah. So feel free to put them in the chat because I'll yeah. try and select them, collate them. And we'll definitely uh, look at those later. So yeah, so think no. about us it, like in a playground together. You know, sometimes it's good to have no plans. You know, enjoy the detours, enjoy the prompts, enjoy you know bouncing ideas off each other as well. And you can look around the room. You know, we're all dressed up. Some of us may have interesting ideas to share. So now I'm gonna start um, by pulling out the program for today, and then you can see what we're going to do. So you can be in tune. So can we all see the PowerPoint? Yes? Yeah. Great. So we entitled this Box of Happiness. You know, I think this is a really good time to spread some cheer. Uh, this is a screenshot from our last block party. You know, we had two sessions. Unfortunately, this time we uh, only have enough energy to do one, but we will be recording this session. So don't worry, you can you know, watch it again. So program, party program for today, we're going to tell you a little bit about, you know, what is Box of Happiness and then you can start uh, this uh, doodling uh, fun exercise. And we're going to share our favorite things. If you remember the sound of music, there's just some of my favorite things. Hopefully, you know, uh, <laughs> you will remember how odd they are. And we are going to talk about, um, you know, yeah, we're going to take your questions and hear your thoughts. And also we are going to share a little bit about 2021, you know, what uh, to expect. So what, what we is, think we're doing, yeah, right? What yes, yes. <laughs> so uh, what is this box of happiness you might be asking? It's basically a digital postcard. Uh, you know, these days I... I don't know when was the last time I actually received a real postcard. Oh, the last one was uh, from Suhita. From me, from me, yeah. yes. So we thought, you know, receiving a postcard, you know, during this season will be quite fun. So let's create, you know, this, uh, I know you this hour to create lots of postcards, maybe even one or many, that doesn't matter. Fill it with happiness, you know, and send it out to everybody and spread some joy and cheer. So that's what we're really doing. So in this postcard, just think Willy Wonka, 
and Russian dolls. Willy Wonka, you know, think about uh, the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, how uh, fantastical the things are. Think about all the fun, sweet stuff that, you know, um, Willy Wonka creates in his factory. So it can be as fantastical as you want. And so think about the Russian doll. There's always a secret in another secret, something inside something. So think about, you know, these two ideas. How can you mesh them together in your little digital postcard? So the first thing is to create okay, a container or a vessel that will hold okay, all your goodies. It can be square, round, it can be elaborate, simple. What kind of box, vessel, container you know, do you want to create? And create, make it as big as possible to, to fill up the square box. And then you start with the next smaller object. So in this example here, you see that I've created a bottle. And inside the bottle, I've stuffed a pair. Inside the pair, I've stuffed, you know, a toy soldier. And then I've stuffed a sweet. And you just keep going and going so that people can, you know, look at your digital postcard and keep looking for objects of happiness or anything that you associate with joy, you know, with uh, the season. And just fill it up to the brim, all right? So start with a big box, vessel, container, you know, be imaginative. You can create the second or third postcard if you want. You know, you'll probably get better and better. So you can start anytime you want. You can keep your eyes on our sharing or you can, you know, start and stop, doodle every now and then. And we will join you as well. So Suita is starting uh, to doodle. So maybe we can see what Suita is doing and then... Um, we can continue with the sharing. So I'm going to stop share. Oh, let me go down to my desktop. So yeah, I just drew a box out there. And then I'm going to draw the things that, I don't know, the things that make me happy. Uh, I did I did draw my family in before, before we started, but now I'm drawing my tools. I'm drawing the things I've enjoyed drawing. And I hopefully they will end up in my little box postcard. So the idea of taking a box and stuffing as many things as make you happy and making one mad crazy square of everything that makes you happy or makes you feel like the season now or anything, anything really goes into the box and we'd love to see those boxes later. Yeah. And what would you like to send to somebody, you know, so you can, you know, be as imaginative as you want. All right, so this is uh, how we're going to start the hour. Along the way, we will be checking with how's your box of happiness or you may have many, many boxes. Again, it doesn't have to be square. So if you look at my table, I've got my little plate of uh, goodies from the season. I've you know, thrown a few paint tubes as well. I do you think I want go to down to your desk some desk. virtual... Um, ah. Some virtual happiness. And I think I've got my toys, toy soldier, chocolate, little train, chopper chop. Yeah, so just bring anything. It can be imaginative. It doesn't have to be real objects in front of you as well, right? So if you have a question about this uh, fun exercise, feel free to uh, type in your question. Mm -hmm. Anything I'm, to add I'll from you, Suida? I'll be watching the chat. While yeah. So let me go back to my PowerPoint. So this is um, the box of happiness. So enjoy, you know, slowly creating this. So this is a little bit like what we do at the Playlet where we give you a prompt, we give you a tagline, an idea, and unwrap it for you. Later, you will see uh, how we do it as well. And then we get you to rewrap, you know, your mind around this concept, this idea. And then you can see today in the room, there'll be maybe 70 different versions. And mm -hmm. this is where learning happens. So we collectively come together to play. And when we are playing, you will notice um, that we, we do take a lot of uh, detours. We give ourselves permission to experiment. We try out new tools. Uh, so this is what we, we will be sharing next, where we will be taking you in into our kit to show you, you know, what's in our back. So I'm going to go first and then Suita will join me. Uh, we are going to start with um, our, my favorite drawing tools. So here you will see that I've uh, picked out four. I've got uh, quite a few more in my toolkit, but I'll just tell you my workhorses. So from left to right, let me just call out the... Yeah. 
So from left to right, the first workhorse that I use all the time, uh, Suita is going to also jump in to uh, share, uh, is my Black Wing Soft Pencil. A lot of people have been asking me about, you know, what is this pencil? Uh, I, I found it. I cannot remember how I found the Black Wing. I must, I don't know, maybe somebody recommended it to me. Uh, basically, there are three versions, uh, what, uh, silver, white, and black. So black is the softest, and I can get the darkest line possible with the black wing soft as well. So if you have any question about the uh, some of the tools, just type in the chat and uh, hopefully we can answer it along the way or towards the end. And later, I will also pull out a sketch to, to show you. I, I just liked it because, you know, it is uh, it's very smooth. It glides on the paper. Really buttery, you know? Yes, it's a big yeah. buttery pencil. It feels like butter. Yeah, exactly. So if you do have an opportunity to try it, you know, let us know how you, you like this pencil. Um, so I, I sketch a lot with this black wing pen, so it's very versatile as well. Uh, the second thing that I use a lot is my Faber Castle water soluble uh, graphite pencil, which is uh, the num the second uh, item. Uh, it's it's very dark. It ranges from uh, I think two H to eight B. I have the six B uh, on uh, in the slide. Uh, it, it it also gets really dark, and the fun thing is you can add water to it. And you know it will give you a very nice, interesting watercolor effect. You know on top of so you get two or two tools. You know using this pencil, uh, pencil and watercolor. Uh, the mm -hmm. other workhorse is my Sailor Foodie Pen. Uh, it's uh, I I like the fifty five degrees. There is a is that a forty degree version? Is it thirty or thirty five or forty? I forget yeah. the blue one. So it's just the bent of the nib. So I do prefer mm -hmm. um, this uh, 55 degree. Uh, and we fill it up with a D. Atramentis uh, document ink, which is uh, permanent and waterproof when dry on paper. So if you like to, you can also take note of this uh, German brand. It's, uh, it's a really good ink because uh, it doesn't clog the pen and I never have to uh, worry about washing the, the pen. Uh, so I, I, I do like this ink. And they come in black, brown, and uh, in, in a few other colors as well. My other drawing tool that I use a lot is a uh, bamboo skewer, which you can see uh, on the right. Uh, it's a, just a stick really, and I just sharpen the end. It's a really useful tool to drag, to draw with as well. Mm -hmm. So it's just a sharpened stick. It's just a sharpened yeah. skewer. Yeah, you... just a sharpened stick. So, so you can see, uh, if if you have quite a few tools, then you can kind of mix and match and go back and forth, which is like, which is what I like to do. So with one tool, sometimes it can be a little challenging to create variation on the theme as well. Yeah. So if you have question about this, do let us know. Yeah, and you know some of them. What ink do you use with the bamboo skewer? Somebody's asking. What ink? Oh, I dip into anything really. Um, I can dip into my watercolor, so that watercolor becomes an ink straight away. Mm -hmm. Um, I also like to dip it into uh, acrylic ink, so that's yeah. also quite fun. And that's the nice do. thing about a dip pen, right? You're not yeah. stuck with. Uh, there's a question from somebody about what sharpener do you prefer? What oh, sharpener? I do have a black wing sharpener uh, because it, it gives me, uh, a, how do I describe it? it? It exposes more of the lead. So you do get a really thin point. It's your long point. Long no? point, that's right. Yeah, so that you know, it will last a little bit longer and you can move the pencil from you know holding it vertically all the way down to almost horizontal to the paper. Uh, so that gives you uh, gives us a variety of marks. So um, the other thing about sharpener that I've learned is if the blade is poorly made, you uh, you actually end up losing uh, a lot of the the lead because you are sharp you're over sharpening. So it's good to get a really good sharpener uh, with really sharp blade so that you you know you 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 don't shave off too much. That's what I learned. And also when the blade is blunt, if you've had a sharpener for like years and you keep using it, you, you actually uh, break the the pieces off the sharpener instead of sharpening actually. So do look wow. at you know how's your how's your sharpener doing after using especially if you sharpen very often, it's good to actually uh, look at the blade. Have you worn it out? So yeah, today we'll be geeking out a little bit about drawing tool. Hopefully that's uh, interesting for you. Yeah, so some 
someone has Cynthia has uh, typed in come metal one is quite good K U M. Mm -hmm. Um, that that's a really good uh sharpener. It's not the cheapest, you know. Yes, I, I do think that long point can be quite fun. Uh, but if you have a very soft pencil like 6B, over sharpening it become, becomes problematic because the, the, the lag will just keep breaking. So you do look at also the hardness of the pencil combined with the sharpness of the That's sharpening. It's funny, I only, I, well, when I travel, I can't take my X-Acto knife along, but I like, I like sharpening with an X-Acto. <laughs> Ah, and some people like to sharpen with a, a, a knife, you know, because they yeah, do want... You know why? Because you can flatten a side of the yeah, lead. Yeah. You can have diff it doesn't have to be a round lead. Yeah, so you can have it chisel as well. Yeah. Thank you for your question. I think I'm learning from everyone as well. So this is an example of using my black wing uh, soft graphite pencil. I'll start with this first. So I, this is a recent sketch um, using uh, just the graphite pencil. And you can see how I've um, pushed, pull the pencil, you know, scrape it. And you can see the variety of mark just on one pencil. I can get really, really, really dark as well. So the, uh, the only downside is that you have to use a fixative. Uh, if not, it smudges quite easily. Uh, it goes for all soft uh, pencil, you know, 6B, 8B, you do have to fix it. And then I'll show you now the effect of using the water-soluble pe uh, graphite pencil. So some of them, uh, you can see the lines are a little bit blurred. This, they, they, they are kind of turning into watercolor washes. I know that's mm -hmm. the effect of you uh, putting a bit of water on a uh, water soluble uh, pencil. So you, so if you are thinking about you know bringing less to lightening your load, you know try uh, try a water soluble graphite it's pencil. It's really versatile, right? Especially yeah. if you're gonna be doing something in a crowded place or somewhere yeah. you don't want to open up your water. Yeah, yeah. Do you use a graphite pencil? I use water soluble pencil a fair bit and water soluble lead. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. The fun thing is when the paper is wet and you drag the water soluble pencil through that. That I I like that. It be, it makes yeah, it's really smushy. transform. Yeah, it's mushy. Yeah. It transforms the pencil. And again, you can get it even darker once you know water comes in to react with the graphite as well. So here I'm using a six B uh pencil combined with um I believe I was using a bit of watercolor as well. So you get yeah that. The, the warm the warm brown looks like a watercolor. Yes, yes, that's it. So do we have any questions? No, I'll tell you what. How, how do you keep sure. pencil from smudging? Somebody says, and Claire, I think Paul said he needs to use a fixative. Yeah, you have to use a fixative. Or if you are going to continue uh, working on this for a while, uh, I do cover with a piece of paper so that, you know, it, it, it is protected. So nothing's going to rub against it. And also you want to make sure that you don't have any uh, sharp or you know, hard surfaces on top of your drawing because it, again, it will pick up the, the pencil line. And because it's a loose sheet, it's it's even better. If you are gonna do a lot of you know soft pencil work in your sketchbook, just make sure you kind of put a clean piece of paper in between pages so that you don't imprint uh, the new page onto the previous page. That's what I've been doing recently as well. Lots of paper in between. Now I'm going to go on to my uh, my pen the last two tools, mostly the Faudet pen. So this is a 55 degree pen. So it's 55 degrees because of the bent of the nib, which you can see in my uh, little sketch that explains uh, why it's 55 degrees. And this was tradi traditionally used by the Japanese to do calligraphy. Uh, I fell in love with it um, a few years ago when you know I was looking for a variation to my pen line. And you know with this one pen, you can you know, really get thick and thin line and you can even combine the thick and thin in one line as well so it's quite a versatile tool and you can fill it with any color ink as well so for me i sometimes have a brown and a black for day pen in my kit so that i can kind of switch back and forth as well and later sweta will speak more about the for day pen she uses it a lot as well do you have any uh, when did you start using the for day pen Gosh, I don't know. I'm pretty sure I heard about the Fude pen from Lynn Chapman, who might not have been the first to use it, but it's bit um, after 2014, I know, because until 2014, I was using a Sharpie. 
<laughs> ah, yeah. Have... Later on, you will you tell us about our your Shopee. Yes. Yeah, we have some interesting comments. Uh, Cynthia, you're correct. You know, when you have uh when you have pencil line sketches, if you put a thin layer of watercolor wash, uh, the gum arabic from the watercolor does cre uh, create, uh, it can become a fixative as well so that your lines mm -hmm. won't run. Yeah. So Nisha is asking what's a fixative. It's, it's just a, okay, so it's it's like a hairspray. So uh, the, the 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 old days is if you if you don't have a fixative you can use your mother's hairspray and spray all over your <laughs> pencil sketch and it will uh, hold the graphite and stick it well mm -hmm. to the paper so that it doesn't smudge. It's, it's basically just you know spraying a aerosol glue ish thing that it will. It's a very thin coating, but the yes. ones now they would be acid free and yeah, they'd be and non yellowing, so it doesn't affect uh, the. The, the, the sketches so it may darken slightly so be careful not to overdo the fixative do it in thin layers do it you know two or three times if you uh, are using a lot a lot of soft uh, pencil work, or even uh, pesto you can you know use a fixative as well great question now on to my four day pen uh, I'll pull out a sketch let's see so this is uh, my footy pen sketch. You can see that it's just a really quick doodle at the coffee shop. I want to be, you know, fast and mm -hmm. stealth uh, so nobody knows that I'm sketching them. So I like the, <laughs> the footy pen. And you can get, you know, quick broad marks quite quickly just by holding the pen more horizontally or get really... I, and this pen, you can get, use it uh, upside, not upside down in the way that you're using the... the the back end of the pen, but you can just flip the pen 180 degrees. You can use uh, the the opposite end as well. Do you do that, Suita? I do it a quite quite a bit. In fact, I'll I'm, I'll be happy to when we switch to this camera. Yeah, you can show uh, them what we mean when you flip it. Yeah. Sure. So I hope you you have an opportunity to um to explore this uh this pen. And if you have been using it, you know we love to hear your feedback as well. Okay, now uh, somebody's asking. I'll talk about dip pens in a bit, Claire. Yes, yeah, that's right. Okay, so I have to confess, I have a lot of brushes. This is just a very small collection, you know. Uh, you know, I think some of us are addict, and I am a brush addict. So, <laughs> pardon me, but I'm going to tell you a few of my favorite. <laughs> uh, you may have your favorite. I'd love to hear. How did you narrow it down to just these few? I'm amazed that you did. I know you have a lot of brushes. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, so maybe I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll come back to your question. That's a really good uh, question. So the from again from left to right, I like my rosemary and company brushes. I I like especially the series twenty two. They're a little bit longer. They are round, so you do get a really nice uh, uh point, and yet you also get a really a nice soft a bit, uh stroke as well. And the uh, size eight is more for you know big work uh, so the size of the brush really depends on the size of the, the the ground or the canvas or the sketchbook i'm working with if it's you know a4 a3 you know i can quite uh easily work with a size uh eight and below brush uh, uh, size yeah so eight uh, eight ten and twelve are really for you know bigger pieces of paper and my work cost is number two and three, which is uh, Rosemary Series 22 uh, size six brush. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a really versatile brush as well, which I use a lot. It gives you a nice point, it's a nice spring. Uh, it's very, quite sensitive to the paper as well. So you can feel you know, whether you're pushing and pulling too much. Uh, I also use the Escoda Reserva size eight. They're actually quite similar in size, but one is more pointy, one's a bit rounded at the tip. So those are some of the subtle differences as well. And one, you know, really uh, carries a lot of liquid uh, paint. Of course, I have my size 10, like I mentioned earlier, that I use for bigger work. Uh, and the Da Vinci is my uh, favorite as well. Uh, one thing that I do is to sharpen the end of one of my brushes that I bring out so that I can use it as uh, a stick 
uh, to dip into watercolor, to drag, to push, to scratch as well. So, you know, I have, I'm, I create like tools. Tools that can stick with you, right? Yeah, I have a stick with me all the time. So, you know, I can respond very quickly to, uh, to the drawing and the painting at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how you choose your brushes, but I do like the Sable brushes because they hold a lot of liquid, but they also are very capable of releasing uh, any liquid. So I can, you know, do on my splash and flick. Mm -hmm. So it's quite different, you know, uh, compared to a synthetic brush or, you know, like a squirrel hair brush as well. So I, I tend to use less of those because of the, the way I approach my uh, sketching and my painting. Mm -hmm. How about you? Do you have any, are you going to talk about brushes later? Yeah. And so, so very, uh, very briefly, um, I, I think it's sort of interesting because there's, there's one thing about like what brushes do you use, but also why you use them, right? So I'm exactly the opposite. I have almost no pure sable brushes huh? just because I am not gentle with a brush. <laughs> so I dig into stuff. I will, oh, yeah. scrape into, I, I will do things with the brush. So the brushes that work best for me are always um, either mixed Mm. or synthetic and definitely there is that loss you know of how much That's water true. can yeah. carry yeah. Uh, but i just i will i will ruin a sable brush in a week yeah so, so if you've come to our, our, our some of our play sessions we do tell you how to actually uh, maximize your brushes uh, so that you know you you use you can you know, extend their shelf life and not you know over uh, dig and stab your brush against <laughs> uh, paper and also paint as well so if you're using uh watercolor in your palette and if it's are dry, hard and solid, just do make sure you wet them because they they actually, you know, they're like sandpaper against the brush. So you yeah. want to make sure that the the, the paint is nice and, uh, and... just for the joy of paint, like there's something not happy about... Yeah, scratchy, right? Cakes, like rubbing them to death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. That's, so this is uh, a selection of the brushes that I like to use. So what's in your bag? What's in Suhita's bag? Maybe this is what, you know, we would like to find out. So we will be doing the drawing tools first and then later we'll be jumping into uh, the, the color later on. So over to you. All right. Okay. I will do a quick what's in my bag. So I have to admit for a good part, it's for people that draw differently we have surprisingly similar tools i think the difference for me is my tools change all the time uh, so i do have some that i consider workhorses just because they've been there forever but when paul said hey let's talk about our kids i actually went back to my sketches to see what's been lying around my desk for a while and that's really a good indicator of what i'm using wow. a lot so that's that's actually in the last year. It hasn't changed a lot. I have a lot of wax crayons. So maybe before you start, Suhita, maybe we can open up to the room. Okay, make a guess what is Suhita's favorite tool. <laughs> Oh, and only one? I have to, I, they have to choose yeah, one. You have to choose one. So, you know. And I have to answer with one? Yeah. Okay. All we'll right. give you one. So, so we can do it towards the end of your sharing. So you can start guessing what is Suhita's favorite tool. If that's easy, try to guess Suita's favorite color as well. What do you think is her favorite color? I guess we'd have to say, what is my favorite color this week? Oh, we'll yeah, sure. That. Okay, so your favorite color this I'll week. I'll go with that. Yeah. So in general, yeah, I have a few standards, but uh, I do switch things up a lot. So every time people say, what's in your paint box or what's in your kit? Uh, and I try putting it on my blog. It's only current for a week and then something changes. But I'll... I'll I did this today. I put these together today. So it should be current. So for the most part, the 55 Sailor Fude pen, it's become, it's my right hand. It's always, always, always there. Um, I have a few lying around just because my sketch kit will have a few because uh, I worry I will run out of ink. And one of them always has black and the other one will have a brown oh, wow. or a brown and blue mix or a gray, something like that. Uh, the black wing pencils, I like Paul, I don't know where they came from. And it seems ridiculous to talk this much about just a plain drawing pencil, right? But but the black wing is butter. I buy myself a 12 pack for Christmas every year. 
It lasts for the year. It's shockingly expensive for a pencil. So it's my present to myself, but I love these pencils. They feel, it feels happy. You can tell the difference, right? When you use... Yeah, when, when they smush against else. the paper, I'm happy. Yeah. So they're worth it to me. Um, my inks, for the most part, Diatramentis document ink, uh, there will always be somebody who says that they don't get this ink where they are. My second choice would be carbon platinum ink if I could not find the Atramentis document. Uh, both of these, well, the Diatramentis is my favorite, but car carbon platinum works pretty well in my pens too. And it doesn't clog, but I also use my pens very regularly. So if you're sitting your pens around for months without using, I can't say that it'll work, but it does work for me. Uh, but my kit never remains small. So this is currently wow. what's in my, box, in my bag. Uh, it would be the tools I talked about and wax crayons. Um, since I've been drawing so much at home, I've become obsessed with more dip tools than ever. So there's a lot of dip pens and read pens and uh, different ink bottles. Those are little sample ink bottles, all kinds of colors that I'm using a lot. And um, the sailor isn't the only pen I use. I do use different fountain pens that I fill with colored ink. So it's fun to draw with them once in a while. I think one of my absolute favorite tools that should have been in the first slide though, is the Pentel pocket brush pen. I love this one. Oh. It's great for gesture drawing when I draw people. I guess I've been drawing less people since we've been home, um, but that's a tool I'll use a lot. And uh, Water-soluble pencils, always there. A stick or a box of water-soluble graphite also always lives in my bag. So I don't see that. Why, why do you like the stick? Maybe you want to speak to that. Why the stick? Because I can wet my page and draw directly with it. Ah. So, so a lot like you'd use a pencil. I do also have a water-soluble graphite pencil. The stick will just let me uh, cover a big area really quickly. Mm. Okay. But I but I do like that that idea of you know squishing it. Yeah, again. can you see how Suita is using her whole body, you know, <laughs> to draw? So I think the you know find a tool that best help you express that emotion, right? Which often is not just your wrist, it's your whole upper body that's moving to it. Yeah, and sometimes I don't have very logical reasons for why I use something. Yeah, that's except true. that that tool on paper makes me happy. Like something about the Karandash and the, um, I'm forgetting, forgetting what the other pencils I have there are. They are, I think they're the Darwin Ink Tense. Both those, when a surface is wet and I press the pencil into it, it just makes me happy. So I can't say that it is the best pigment and no, there isn't something else comparable. This is just what's making me happy right now. So she always asking about the Pentel brush pen. The Pentel brush pen. Uh, it's, How do it's, you uh, take care of the brush pen so you don't ruin the tip? Ah, it's so the Pentel brush pen. It's a workhorse. I think this one ten dollar pen I've had for years, and I it's see. tip is synthetic, and I don't buy the super expensive ah. uh, natural hair tip. This okay. brush I've had forever. Uh, in fact, for the same reason, I'm not kind to it and it lasts forever. I'm happy to do a few strokes on my work later and yeah. show you how I yeah, use it. Yeah, show us how you do I, I guess the fun bit is, you know, as the paint changes, you can also uh, maximize how the, the lines become a bit rough or calligraphy-like. Yes. So because, you... and especially if you draw fast, you know, because I draw yeah. fast, Paul, however wet a tool is, the stroke will dry up because it can't keep up with the speed of the stroke. Mm, that's true. Yeah. And so, I, I guess also if you're using really rough paper, it wears out the tip faster. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's true. That's true. So you get, yeah, but with the synthetic tip, I haven't found it to die. It seems to live forever. <laughs> I'm glad you're looking at questions because for some reason when I'm sharing, I don't see the questions. I'll read the questions for you. Lovely. All right. So really quickly, uh, I, I do this often. I will pull out all my tools. I think I'm doing a little sketch. Everything gets drawn. So I think I think tools are wow. fine, but what you do with them is really um, so you can see I have a lot of I'm not a, I'm not um, somebody who makes quiet drawings or calm drawings. So all my tools are things you can 
like slap down on the page, make dark marks with. So they're suited to how I draw, I guess. That's the kind of things I end up liking. So do you, do you tend to also um, vary the speed based on the tool or you? Definitely. So so sometimes I will use a tool that will slow me down. So for it's me- like the, Which tool does that? The dip pens will do that because uh, they will run out. I that's mean- true like the bamboo pen i have to dip back uh -huh. or the metal um the metal dip pens if i go too fast or i press too hard they will split and they can't carry the ink fast enough okay. right so okay. so i sometimes use a tool that's not quite a tool or a stick i'll use it because it doesn't work as fluidly as my sailor pen mm. and i like that sometimes it forces me to go slower or it brings um a sort of raw imperfection into work. So I like it for odd things, like the fact that it makes an imperfect line or that yeah. it skips and it breaks up. So, so you yeah. kind of talk to your tool sometimes. I think so. I think it's a conversation. But <laughs> you, I might think I'm doing something. My tool will not do that. Yeah, it's like your tool will tell you, hey, no, I'm not good <laughs> at this. So. For sure, for sure. But I think a tool is just the starting point. It's what you do with it. So this is just two pens, no variable width, wow. two inks and a drawing. Um, it's something I've been playing with a good bit using, using two ink pens and nothing else in the field and seeing what, how much sort of color or how much feeling can I bring with that to work? Um, Maybe later you can need to show them how, you, how we put the two pens together side by side. Sure. Sure. If I find all my stuff, it's scattered all over this desk. But yeah, I'll go find it. Uh, or watercolor pencil, right? It's, it's one thing to say, oh, yeah, I use water soluble pencil. So this is this is water soluble pencil used over watercolor. So basically on a wet ground, because that that base color is wet. And that's why you can see the lines are so intense, because basically the pencil is melting into the watercolor. Yeah. So I like tools like that, that will give me really intense color or that will do variable stuff. I think that's true of you too, Paul, that like a lot of tools you use, they can do more than one thing. And maybe it's true of all urban sketchers because you can't carry 20 things, yeah. right? Yeah. And so I just wanted to share these for effect because I've talked about what's in my sketch kit, right? But I didn't always draw like this. So I went back to my old sketchbooks. This is 2009, 2010. No water media in my wow. sketchbook. A pretty tight controlled line, neatly colored almost inside the lines with a pencil, dry pencil. That's how I was working. Um, yeah, so those are those are from various but It's nice to see the transition, the sketch before, you know, high energy. And then this one is a lot quieter. And it... This was 11 years ago. I was just getting back to drawing after many years. Um, I think it was, I think it's difficult to be quick and energetic when you first start. You're just, mm. I'm just trying to capture what, what I find interesting is my subjects are very similar. I still like drawing the same yeah. thing. The line has changed, the medium I use changed, but and very clean. There's no smudges, no, no drips. No smudges, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's quite distinct. Yeah. So I think we like to look at our old sketchbooks to see the journey, the, the mm -hmm. transition, right? You know, the thought process as well. And I think uh, there's no right and wrong, but I think we also see how we have edited, dropped certain things and elevated certain tools or technique, right? Yeah. And things change, but I think... At so some people, you know, they don't want to do drawing until they get really good. But sketchbooks are also memories. Like I'm looking at the page on the top left. And I think that mm. was when I was traveling and I had a two and four year old. So in the wow. bottom of the page is a count of the color of the taxis that passed up. So that's <laughs> something, I don't know, they must have been interested in that, which is why I have a count of green taxis, red taxis, yellow wow. taxis. So it's, you know, you should draw whenever, however, whatever your skill level is, because I would never remember this if it wasn't in my book. So were you using a Fode pen then? Oh, no, this is some black pen. I don't know what black pen. I don't know if it's 
ink that's permanent and I don't even know if it's waterproof because I'm not using any water media. That's the, um, that's, you know what big book this is, right, Paul? This is not even the watercolor book. Ah, it's the yes. moleskin. The sketchbook, yeah. Yeah, it's, so it's not watercolor paper. That's just, I, I did, don't think I had the bandwidth or maybe I didn't feel like I could use water media in the, in the field. I wasn't using it for the first few years that I was drawing in sketchbooks. Were you drawing quite quickly because you had young uh, child? I was child, drawing kid. little stuff. So if little you look stuff. around, uh, the things I'm drawing are little things. You know, they can be drawn quite fast. I see. Yeah, or at the beach where they could build sand castles forever. Then I might do a sketch okay. or when they're asleep or something like that. So the subject matter was very much around what was possible. And it was definitely small. Mm. Uh, sometime later, watercolor came in three or four years later. And for the longest time until I think when I first met you, Paul, I was still using a Sharpie pen. So these are all Sharpie, Sharpie and watercolor. Wow. Yeah, and I think I just took to it because I started drawing fast and the Sharpie can go very fast. In fact, you can't pause with a Sharpie because as soon as you pause, you get a blot. And you were a, car, uh, a symposium correspondent, so you had to draw really, really fast, right? To capture the Yes, I think shot. I drew fast then. I drew faster than I drew now. And you can see that like the one on the right is from Barcelona. That's the yeah. when we had the final sketch yes. draw. And, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I was drawing like that. So drawing fast wasn't hard for me, but definitely a Sharpie is not something I use anymore. Hmm. Uh, Why? You want to speak to that? Sure. One, one, a lot of people asked me if it was archival, which at that point, I didn't know what archival was. I wasn't thinking about it. I was just drawing. But the other thing is, I think I also found variable line tools. And uh, uh -huh. the Sharpie will give you one width with one pen yeah. uh, and while I like how fast it can go nothing for me nothing matches the sailor fude so when I found the sailor fude the the shopee was gone <laughs> ah, so I, I guess for us you know the line is like our music notes right so we don't just want to have one note we want to be able to play a full range right yeah it's not something I needed in the beginning I was just trying to draw on location uh, but as I, as I got more comfortable drawing on location, I wanted more out of my tools. And I certainly mm. didn't want to carry two or three kinds of pen. Yeah. And definitely, I, I I can't say when I first took to the Fude, but since the Fude, there has been no... I don't use very much uh, single width sort of tools anymore, which is why I like the pencil too, because the pencil can go light and dark, thick and thin, yeah, all yeah, of that one tool. Yeah, so I know some of you like your microns, your... 0 0.1, 0 0.2 micron pens as well. That's one tool I, I won't use unless I have to. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's too exact. It reminds me too much of my days in graphic design school because a lot of design I did was before the computer and you did this very exact, you wrote all your body copy out with a fine pen, yeah. never doing it again. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, so... That's sort of where I started. I mean, these, I like looking at these. These are so long ago and so different mm. from what I do now. Um, and then I'll talk, a, I'll just go to the slide for a wee bit because I, I think, Paul, you should talk pigment much more than me. So uh, I won't talk my exact pigment colors because shockingly, I, I think I have one or two pigments different from what you use, Paul, but otherwise I use almost the same pigments. I yep. also change my pigments up very, very often. Mm. So it's, you know, I can't say this is my yeah. standard set. Um, I do like my pointed rounds. And then the other brushes I like a lot are the dagger brush. And it's mm. for exactly the same reason that I like the Fude, because with one brush, you can do thick and thin lines. Yeah. Uh, I use a water brush sometimes, never since... Mostly to take white out of a tube of paint and add a white huh. highlight. Um, and the spray bottle is newish. It's become quite a bit of my big mess painting process. I use it quite a lot to spray things away on paintings recently. But I'll let you take it from here because sure. I think you should talk about pigments. Will do. 
So I hope you are still having fun sketching and you know hearing uh about our tools. Yeah. So we may I may, I might have to go on a detox very soon, you know, and <laughs> stop buying any more supplies. So <laughs> I'm gonna just pull out my PowerPoint again. So now that you've heard from Suhita, I'm gonna jump back to talk about you know our palette. Not not so much about color, you know, in 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 detail. But I'm going to just pull out uh, my daily watercolor palettes. I do have two that I take out with me very often. So my primary palette is uh, good enough. For most days, I can you know get quite a range. Uh, and um, it's really light in this uh, little aluminum uh, tin. And I, I don't know how many colors I do have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 18, I have 18 colors uh, wow. in this uh, small little palette. Yeah, so I, 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 I'm I, not like a three color person. I find it really, really tough. Uh, on the right is my secondary palette that has a few more uh, interesting, uh, weird color that sometimes I'll bring this palette out, especially if I know that I'm going to do mm -hmm. maybe a little bit more uh, floral. So I do have my Potter's Pink, my Queen Rose, my Moon Glow, uh, Sleeping Beauty, which is that light uh, baby blue color that's quite beautiful. And I've got my gold inside as well. So those wow. are... So you've got a good good number of paints in your secondary palette. Yeah. So so both palettes will give me, you know, uh, even a bigger range to quickly express myself. So mm -hmm. I, I I like, you know, be able to have some options. I Of course, there's there's still maybe a couple more palettes lying around, but, you know, I, I, I will share it. We won't talk about those. Yeah, we won't talk about it today, but, you know, know that, you know, is I never saw it too, uh, but it, it gives you also an idea that um I only had so many colors after after a couple of years, so you know it's 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 good to sometimes do some editorial to your color selection like what Suita say based on maybe uh, what you want to focus on. So sometimes you know the having too many colors can be uh, overwhelming or confusing at times. So it's good every now and then to just kind of go with uh with a uh, different palette just to shake things up as well. Do, do you do that, Suita, from time to yeah, time? Yeah, things disappear all the time from my palette. Sometimes I think I will love a color forever and yeah. then next year I can't see why I have Yeah, it. and also I guess it's easier for some of you, you know, having a change in season, you can actually adjust your palette to kind of work with the... the. the I, I know, Suita, does that, right? Your, your autumn colors are... A little bit, now. like... like only only at this time of the year does paints gray appear in my palette. I don't yeah. need it for the year. I need yeah. 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 So um color is also very specific. It's 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 a uh... It, it, it is a matter of preference and taste. And also uh, I, I was reading recently about color and uh, color is a language of the heart more than the head. So mm -hmm. So sometimes it's difficult to actually tell you why I like oh are you still guessing Suita's favorite color? Do you want Actually, to... there's been yeah, there's been good guesses. Yeah, many people think you like brown. <laughs> uh, it's close to the color I like, but not brown. So, what's your favorite color? Orange. This oh, week, yeah. which orange? O orange, actually. So, I like to say orange because orange can go anywhere from gamboge to mm. like transparent pyrrole, which. Looks yeah. red some, but but I, I I like orange because it's a moving color. It's not uh, you no know, one color doesn't come to mind when you say it. Orange is always like orange. I have lots of orange stuff. And your current favorite type of orange is transparent pyrrole. Yeah, so you can <laughs> see it in my chart as well. Transparent pyrrole orange. So I, I, it's also one of my favorite. Um, I think three three criteria come to mind when I pick my color and I think Swedish share a similar um, criteria as well mm -hmm. is that we like our color to be uh, transparent so you know it is uh, going to be more lively vibrant and it doesn't look dull as well um, so transparency yeah it's, it's high on our list uh, we also like uh, colors that are adaptable and mixable do you want to speak to that? Uh, about adaptable and mixable yeah, yeah. I think when, especially when you're building a palette, I mean, my palettes are all built as an urban sketcher. It just needs to do more than just be a pretty color, right? Mm. Or just lovely on yeah. its own. So 
Uh, it's no point loving a color just as it is in its pure form. It also needs to do things with other colors. Otherwise, it's occupying too much space in a re in really valuable real estate. Yeah, so I think to me, an adaptable color is like a friendly color. It's friend to many other colors. Mm -hmm. And they, they don't necessarily uh, cra clash as much. So they, yeah. they, they are really uh, useful to support. So we'll talk about it, uh, talk a little bit more about that as well. La last criteria that I choose, uh, used to choose my color is uh, how much it granulates. Of course, not every color should be granulating because they can um, be too uh, attention grabbing. So you do have one, you do want to have some colors that are maybe a little quieter, some colors to speak a little louder, and some colors to do crazy stuff so that you have variety as well. Yeah. Do you have a lot of granulating colors in your palette? Not a lot. I mean, um, I have the burnt siennas, the ultramarine, mm. and, and I now have your black, which I'm loving. Yes. The so I'm going to so, talk so about black is that. mad granulating, but otherwise not, not many. Um, I need a couple. I do a lot of wet and wet mixing. So if I have a few, there's always going to be granulation. Yeah. So before I switch, uh, the, the next slide. So, uh, Barbara has a question, you know, my color chart is not, uh, it's, it's, most of the colors I've found in my color chart in, from my primary palette, but this chart was done based on a slightly older selection that has one or two extra color. So you will see that I have Loop Appetite, which is, you know, a very beautiful uh, primatite granulating color. I have Piemontite from a natural stone. Yeah, but most of uh, what I use in my primary color is still found in a color chart as well. Yeah, I'll probably need to do one... Uh, how do you know which color granulates? Uh, Rachel is asking that. Um, you, actually, you can test it or it's on the tube, right? Yeah, it's on the tube. You can check the color chart. They'll tell you this is uh, granulating. Uh, but it doesn't tell you how much you granulate. It just tells you it's granulating. So just test it. Uh, granulation also is dependent on how much water, the paper surface that you use as well. Yeah. And we will probably have to talk a little bit more about that next year when we have more time with you. Now I'm going to jump into uh, my latest project, which is the Color Play Lab set uh, that I created, curated uh, for Daniel Smith. And some of us may have seen it on my Instagram. So this is basically a 10 color uh, set, five mil tube that I put together. Uh, this tube, uh, this set, of 10 colors is based on the concept, you know, very close to sketching play lab, where we talk about play. How do you treat and see your colors as uh, tools, play tools or toys that you can, you know, mix and match and play uh, with. So think about play, you know, it is intuitive. We take detours, we celebrate exploration. Uh, so all you need to do is to pick up two colors. You know, you can see it on the plate. Just pick up two colors, invite them to dance, invite them to the dance floor, and then, mm -hmm. you know, introduce water and then see what happens in front of your eyes. So one of the fun things, you know, that I like about watercolor is that, you know, you can actually watch the water gravity, you know, act on the pigment as, uh, in real time. And then as it dries, you slowly see the dance coming uh, coming to fruition as well. And sometimes the dance is, you know, like a tango, really high energy. Sometimes it's quite quiet, it's slow moving, you know, and I think that's the fun bit of, about playing with color. And then you develop you know, a certain affinity to a certain color, to a certain dance. And then that hopefully gives you more tools in your uh, toolkit. And then the lab part is the ability to, you know, withhold judgment and experiment and create interesting mixes uh, without having to impose on this is what I want to see. This should be the result. But we are expectant, we are open to using what may be available, you know, after all that play and experiment. Do you want to speak about that? Sweet though. Sorry, say that I was just looking at the uh, chat question. Ah, do you want to talk about how you uh, how you know color is also a playful exploration for you? Yeah, in in general, I don't have um, a sort of um, you know a primary, secondary. This is why I choose a color way to bring mm. color into my palette. Um, it's colors that do fun stuff on my mm. page. So uh, yeah. Um, 
it's it's one of those reasons why I have a very hard time putting um, logical <laughs> reasons to the colors in my. That's palette. why color is a language of the hearts. It's not that we we haven't learned our color theory. We both have done that extensively. We we know our complementary colors, but now we kind of move to the next phase where we just uh, want to respond and want to see how. So I think both of us also shared this. Um, concept of how colors can collaborate and create also interesting conflict and tension on paper. And this is going to be a theme that we'll be exploring next year in our Sketching Play Lab. In, mm -hmm. in also many other concepts like drawings, we can also draw in a very collaborative way or we can use our marks to create conflict. And I, uh, I borrowed this uh, collaborate and conflict from Nishan. Nishan is in the house. Nishan is in the room as well. And he is the sneaky art. Yeah. He runs the sneaky art podcast. Uh, yes. If if you haven't listened to them, uh, search Nishan and search Sneaky Art Podcast. He's been talking to lots of urban sketchers. Um, really fun podcast to listen to. Paul, your interview is coming up soon, right? Yeah, my interview will be coming up soon. It'll be released by Nishan on Christmas Day. So it's a lovely. Oh, that's a nice day to have one released. Yeah, I I am mortified to hear my own voice, but hopefully. You know, it has turned out good. So, oh, I don't learned. listen to the whole of it. I didn't listen to my whole interview. I can't stand listening to myself. Yeah. So, Nishan, if you want to, you can put in your uh link. Yes, put it in website. chat. Yeah. Put, put your URL in chat for everybody. Yeah, I think uh, we would need to get Nishan on the next blog party. He has got lots of you know fine cool stuff to share as well. Yeah. So check the chat box i think nishan is typing something for you and i, I, I there were great conversations you know uh, that nishan recorded like with suhita shari paul Houston. Uh, so i think it'll be a good way to spend uh, the christmas listening to inspiring conversations as well okay. so look out for um uh, next year where we talk about color but you know color as a, a language of the heart uh, and sometimes it's, it's difficult to actually explain you know what the heart says but we will try to to see if we can help you with that yeah so. we were always this one was a hard one right because we we wanted to talk about color but not I, we've really been, we are, we've been you know, doing a lot of digging and uh, playing with color and we wanted to also find out for ourselves how do we uh, deal with color and use color to speak so you can see on this slide you know how both of us um, have been playing and you know playing with different themes, materials. So I'm going to stop share and, you know, go back to Suita for a bit. Yeah, and, you know, we'll look at some quick questions and stuff. So, yeah, it's some, some, somebody asked about the brush pen and about ink. Maybe I'll go down to my desktop. Yeah, that's a good idea. So about the the Fude, right, which is the Sailor, Sailor the... And your deep pen as well. Eight. Yeah, so the nice thing about it is you can go from a super thick line to if you turn the pen around, a super thin one. And all this is without ever lifting the pen. And I really like that. I like, I like being able to do all of that and to go really thin if I want, which I don't go often, but should do more of. But it all happens with one nib. So that's really, really fun with that pen. Uh, somebody else asked about a favorite brown ink. If I have to use one, I'll, if I have to use a waterproof one, I'll use Diatramentis Document Brown. Uh, but I use lots of browns. Just now I have a Waterman Brown on my desk that it, that's this lovely, uh, really warm reddish brown, but you can see it's completely water soluble. And my obsession just now is a yellow orange ink called Noodler's Apache Sunset. Wow. Is and it water soluble? Completely water soluble. So it's not something here, yeah, but I'll drop it here and you'll see why I like it. Oh, it's like the persimmon color. Yes. And the nice thing is when you, you it's, it's, uh, it's variable when it's so, used in a big puddle, it's orange, but when you thin it out, it goes yellow. And um, it's so gorgeous. Rachel is asking, um, do you draw first and add a color, ink, or you can so. Yeah, both we do ways. both ways. So I think Suita can demonstrate how she will do this with the persimmon. Yeah, so I could either, if like if, if I had that persimmon, right, I might put down the, I might put down a color 
and then go back in and draw on it. Yeah. So and I'm drawing with a water soluble pencil right now. So you can see that the edges will smudge a wee bit. So we will talk about, you know, how we handle material next year in our play lab. You can see how Sweeta is moving her hand quite frantically, like she's almost dancing. Uh, so I think this is what we encourage, you know, at the play lab where you look at your tool, refresh eyes as well. This is the yeah, water so soluble will pencil. Be some tool based and some color based play labs are coming up. Paul and I have been working on them these last few weeks. Uh, so yeah, so this one is color first and I could very well go the opposite direction. And she asked about this, right? So she how the brush pen I use mm. is a cheap, it's the under $10 brush pen, the pocket brush pen and it's nip, it's, uh, you can do anything with it. It doesn't, never kills it. it I think there is a, probably an expensive version. There is an expensive oh. version for sure. Uh, I don't use it because I do this with it. And that's not something you want to do with. But I, I love that because when you go faster than the pen can go, it gives you really so, dry. So uh, can you tell us what pen is this again? Someone's asking. This is the Pentel Pocket Brush Pen. Pentel Pocket Brush Pen. And yes, and it's you, about... can refill it, you can refill it or get cartridges. So basically, it, uh, uh, it it's filled with ink. And I use it so a it's... lot for gesture drawing. So if I'm drawing in the field and drawing people, it goes really, really quick for drawing like that. And so it's I, the same thick and thin in one. Yes, hand, the right? same idea of using, being able to get a whole bunch of versatile line out of yeah. them too. Someone is also asking about the Fude pen. In the market, there are very few equivalent. Uh, not many people make a bend nib pen because it's peculiar to, uh, you know, calligraphy in the Asian world. And, then we, and it's only Asian calligraphy, right? It's not, it's yeah. not... Uh, Yes, it's and Western calligraphy. Yeah, but now Urban Sketch has taken over using it to draw, <laughs> which is you know really unconventional. So maybe the uh, more people will make, you know, for day pen in the future. Uh, if you are thinking about bending your, your your regular fountain pen and bending the nib, please don't do that. It doesn't work. You will break the nib. All right, mm -hmm. because some people think, oh, I'll just drop my pen. And if it's bent, <laughs> it'll become a full day pen. No, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. No, it, also, this is one of the cheapest pens out there. So just, just buy it out as yeah. is. Uh, somebody's asking also about the orange color that you just used. You want to tell them again the name? Sure. It's it's the Noodler's Ink Apache Sunset. And I will actually put that into uh, the chat right there. Ah, someone, yeah, Eileen bent her pilot fountain pen it works yeah so yes, great but Eileen Eileen I mean works a lot with fountain. Eileen is very skilled she knows yeah. what she's doing it's it's not something you and yeah. I could do so this is your box of happiness that you are doing yeah I'm drawing my Let's box of see. happiness it has my persimmon down there I hate eating them I don't eat them <laughs> but I draw them really the no my oh. husband gets to eat them all I, I only draw them right yeah. yeah. So yeah, I can we can see a lot of. Uh, and just... I have my Scrabble tiles, which have disappeared. But uh, we've played a lot of that in the pandemic. I have my family down there. I have my art supplies all in my crayon box. So I thought I got a bunch of things that make me happy. I got some Christmas colors in too. Oh, cool! Nice, <laughs> cool. So uh, I think you heard from Sweeta how her kit evolved. And for you guys out there, maybe you can also do a stock check and see how your kit may have evolved and what are some of the reasons that you know you have your current kit and why, uh, why you kept some bits, uh, tools, and you know you, why some tools were retired. As well. I think it's okay to let go of some things um, and revisit them also, every now and then. It's sort of, I, I think it's also important to know why you use something. Because if you don't draw, say like me, yeah. then my tools are not going to work for you. You may not draw like me. And then you don't want to use my tools or they won't do what you want them to do. Yeah, and I, th I think also through the playing uh, the last few months, we we have also learned about our tools having, you know, often more than one function and mm -hmm. more than capable to do something else. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, any other question before we go into the last bit? I'm looking... I'm, uh, this is my unfinished uh, box of happiness. Yeah, let me go down to your box of happiness. Yeah. So I... Nice. 
Yeah, you can see nice. that. I you can know, see you got some more things to fill in, but you got a big collection you can add in there. Yeah, I think uh, I like to spend send it to the people, and you know, hopefully, you know, it will bring you some cheer as well. So, uh, Joe is asking you, Suita, do you use new color two water soluble crayon? I do. Yeah, so Paul does, and I just bought me some for Christmas. So they're not here yet, but what we have on Paul's desk, those yeah. are the soluble ones, right? So uh, for those who are new, uh, this is made by Karen Dash. Um, it is better than, you know, children's crayon. Uh, mm -hmm. New color one is permanent. New color two is water soluble. So I don't know whether I have any soluble ones here, but you know, they again with a bit of oil, yeah, there is. So this is water soluble. So if I were to add in a bit of water, you can see you can actually, oh no, this permanent. That's silly. a permanent one, yeah. So you've got a mix in there. I do, yeah. You know, it's terrible. I shouldn't, but you know, it will, it will soften and it's quite fun to, to use as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. when you have. I think they both do different things, right? Like for me, the wax is a resist. I can draw with it and it's just like children's wax crayons. Yeah, so it. my other favorite at the moment is also my my super fat um, Faber-Castell oh, water-soluble water pencil? Soluble pencil. Yeah, this is the nice. Faber-Castell. And because it has a super fat thick lead, you can do bigger work and it's very gestural. And they... Also, work with water, so you can get both. You can soften it, and then you can go back in again. So if you see some of my videos, this is what I I, I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so because that's a super rich color you get when you use yeah. it wet. Yeah. So you can you know uh, put your kit uh your watercolor palette at home and just bring this out, so you get the best of both worlds as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. So what we're gonna do? Yes. So Eileen has also a box of the Magnus pen. So yeah. any other question before we? Yeah. Later on, don't worry. We'll get you. That? What blue is that, Paul? Pardon? What blue is that? Somebody wants. Oh, to know. what blue is this? This is the Helio blue reddish. So it is like yeah. a super reddish ultramarine, actually. Yeah, I only have the 24 color set, not the full set. So some of colors are... Uh, I know, but that's, that's about that's all enough. you could carry into the field, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, so as you are continuing your box of happiness, we hope that you will share your digital postcard with all of us on Instagram. You can send it personally to uh, friends or family via Instagram or email them your digital postcard you know, after you've finished it or you can share it publicly so that we can all spread some cheer. So Nishant, <laughs> Nishant has, has a question. Any advice on waiting for watercolor to dry? Nishant, I'm a bad one for giving advice on that. I rarely wait for watercolor to dry. Yeah, I and when one area is drying, we just basically work on another area or we just keep working over the wet area. It doesn't matter actually. Yeah. Yeah. So if for so example, this is where, you know, I can still go in with my pencil. So yeah. That. So actually a lot of line, I will do a lot of line also Nishant with a pencil. So get the black in the black wing. Yeah. And it's, it'll go on wet watercolor and it'll do yeah. really good. And if it's, if it's not super wet, when I'm yeah. outdoor, you know, in the tropics, you know, this dries, you know, maybe in about five minutes and I can come back to this again. So we're just cycling around, okay, the, the, the sketch. So we will also talk about how we play with some of these ideas. And that's a good way to bring us to, you know, 2021. Yeah, and let's I'm talk sure about you, you some, wanna... some thoughts we have for next year. Yeah. So if you're new to sketching Play Lab, you know, this year we did quite a few things like you heard, you know, in the beginning we started in uh, April and then, you know, we we thought no one's going to play with us once lockdown <laughs> ends. But after nine months now, this is the 10th, you know, people are still uh, playing with us and they are getting more playful, which is great, you know, and they are taking, you know, this playing back into their own practice, which is even uh, more interesting for us, you know. Uh, so next year, we will continue to hold regular blog parties uh, where, you know, we get to meet you even though uh, it is only virtually, you know, it's still a great way to hang out with you. 
uh, and celebrate you. We will continue to invite, you know, um, our friends. Uh, so you have heard from Liz still. And also uh, last blog party, you also met uh, Shari, our dear friend who did a demo for us as well. So two we'll... demos for us at two separate parties. Yeah. So next year, we will definitely invite more friends and guests to come and talk about, you know, how they play, you know, how they keep their practice, uh, you know, going, even though, you know, the pandemic may still be around. And yeah, we would love to hear your thoughts about, you know, what else, you know, do you want to see uh, at Sketching Play Lab? How can we, you know, celebrate play and, you know, celebrate sketching as well at the same time? Do you have anything to add? And some, some people are asking about whether we'll repeat sessions. So we'll do what we're doing this year. We may pull some sessions into other yeah. sessions or we will uh, bring in new sessions or we will, you know, interchange them and run yeah. some of the older sessions. So if you missed an older session, it will be back. We'll intersperse them with newer sessions. We yeah. have a bunch of new sessions we're quite excited about. Yeah. So the next slide will show you if you uh, if you haven't been uh, walking with us this year. This is the eight session that we did this year, play sessions. Uh, each right. one of them uh, contains a single or a few very simple key concepts and ideas that we play with. We take it apart. We rewrap our mind around it, and we'll show you how you can wrap your mind in your own way around these ideas as well. So we started the year with playing with lines. Uh, we wanted to revisit mark making. Uh, we also talk about freeing your lines. Uh, a lot of us, uh, you know, often after sketching for a while, we'll find that our line can get quite stiff. So we came up with ways to actually, you know, free our lines and break away from the monotony and see how else, especially if you are a single tool sketcher, sometimes, you know, do want to look at ways to shape things up. Uh, you know, this can be a very fun session. And then also we talk about, you know, playing with uh, water and color. And, and also, uh, we, we, we definitely will bring this back again. And every time we come back with a new session, you will find that we try to also see if we can uh, uh, adjust a certain part so that, you know, it gives you a fresh perspective, even though you may be doing it again and That's again. That's right. So even when we come back with uh, free your lines, we will bring some new concepts into yeah. it, right? So you will also see that we have a break and build, which is a very interesting uh, play session. And some of us, uh, I know you have done it like two, three times and you know, it, it, it's still fun. So next year, yeah, we will certainly introduce it again. Uh, the last two sessions that we did uh, was pack your bags and shifting views. They are all virtual travel play sessions, but they also teach you a very interesting concepts as well. And I think some of us are still doing it right now. Uh, uh, we are very happy that you uh, found it useful and playful. So these are the eight sessions that we will certainly bring back, but you will see them maybe in different variations. The fun bit is that these sessions can also be combined. For example, we can do uh, session three, six, and eight at the same time. And we are also thinking about how we can actually uh, show you how to do it and know they will become very interesting combinations. So this is the fun bit about playing where, you know, off, there's no one way to actually play once you know how to. So looking ahead, 2021 can be a scary uh, start for some of us. So we are going to start, you know, talking about starting again. You know, for some of us, starting again can be daunting because, you know, where do we even begin? And we're going to address and, you know, talk about that as well from our own personal practice. And under starting again umbrella, we have three play sessions that we have lined up. The first one is going to kick off by uh, asking you to look closely. And what do you mean by looking closely? Uh, then we will, re uh, we will bring back free your lines. You know, and also we will talk about fresh beginnings. How do you actually start a page? Do you want to say anything, Sweeta? No, I'm, I, I'll answer a couple of questions. Though Cheryl says, mighty happy you're still keeping this running. You know, we're, we're happy, we're excited. We're also, we've been surprised for nine months now. So maybe one day we'll stop being surprised. We're, we're <laughs> surprised you're still coming, uh, but uh, we're enjoying doing this. So Yeah, yeah. but I think our eventual uh, aim is to play in real time in with you yes in definitely person. one day play in person there's yeah. one more question there from shiho shiho says is it the same times for now we will probably keep the same times because there's paul on that side yeah. of the world me on this side of the world and there's everybody else in between and we found that 
between the two times we have, we have a Pacific morning time on weekdays yeah. and a Pacific evening on Friday evening, which is Saturday morning yeah. in Asia. Yeah. And between those two, we cover most places in the world. So yes, we will keep those going. Yeah. And also, uh, we don't really record our sessions because they're so interactive. It's like live theater, yeah. you know, watching a video, uh, it's, it's different uh, from experiencing No, we also we want you in the room playing and responding. It's yeah. not a one-way lecture. It's, uh, we say this, you do that, we respond to what you do, and then we go ahead. So it's definitely not a yeah. recorded sort of session of uh, somebody else says that are the dates out yet you will receive an email as soon as you can sign up for the first set so everybody that is here is probably on our mailing list if you aren't write to splaylab yep. at gmail.com so the details are up on your mailing list because the mailing list gets to hear about the classes and uh we fill them up as they as they announce yeah so we we try to keep the room cozy so at, at the moment, it's about 23 people in the room so that we can actually uh, hear you also look at your work a little bit more closely and also, and also kind of uh, bring 23 people together in a cozy room to, to learn together as well. So it's not just from us, we're just your coach. Uh, the link, learning also comes from that sharing as well. So yeah, uh -huh. so like Sweeta mentioned, you know, drop us uh, an email if you haven't joined our mailing list because you will get regular announcement. And also uh, find us on Instagram, uh, hashtag sketching play lab. People are still posting, they're still playing, which is good because it allows us to uh, journey with you and share in your creativity. Because often I'll be like, oh, I must try that. You know, that's a new tool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And also write to us. Sometimes you have ideas or whatever or things that you wish we could do. That, that email address, it's just Paul and me. It's not some big company it's not some big set of people yeah. it's paul and me checking the email uh, we'll eventually answer it or we'll be inspired by what you have to ask us or tell us so i'm now out of the uh, screen share so what should we do now suita nothing we're close to the end of an hour and an hour and a half right yeah but so um, maybe the last few questions you want to send in there something before we I, I do want to at the end have people hold up stuff and screenshot it. Uh, but any last questions? My yeah, biggest we'll challenge some last up, questions and then we love yeah, to Claire says that uh, keeping up momentum is hard. Um, and that's a challenge for all of us, especially made complicated by the pandemic. Uh, it's, it's a two-pronged thing, right? For me, I definitely need new inspiration, but also turning up at my sketchbook every day and putting pen to paper makes the habit easier. I don't know if it works like that for you. I think it's a combination of both, finding inspiration and also making it a practice. Yeah, I know some, some of us this year have been walking a lot. And for me, yeah, walking uh, mm -hmm. in nature is also very inspirational because it allows your mind to, to wonder uh, it also allows you to slow down and be surprised by the smallest thing. So that's also one of the aim of, you know, uh, sketching playlet where we we come together, we talk about, oh, this it's, has inspired me. Then somebody goes and try and say, yeah, it also helped me as well. Yeah. Or, or when I'm stuck, sometimes I'll just look up the hashtag on Instagram and there, sometimes a subject will inspire me that somebody else yeah. drew. Oh. And and also playing playing often with you guys is so inspiring because then my mind will be buzzing for a few days. I'll be like, oh, I I need to try this. I need to, and uh, yeah, I just I, I just can't stop once uh -huh. you know I the playing starts. Yeah. So thank yeah. you everybody for your question. I think we're close to holding up our box of happiness. We love to see yeah, our. Let's do that i'd love to screenshot it and if you didn't finish it still hold it for a screenshot just so we have a memory of us together and then you can post it online always hashtag sketching play lab and maybe you want to add hashtag box of happiness to that and we can see everybody's box of happiness so please hold up your box of happiness uh and hold it up for maybe a, uh a minute so that suhita can screenshot everybody and you know it takes me three uh three screenfuls of sketches i'm off uh, what do you call it screenshots to do that so give me a quick minute 
here is one and wow that's beautiful Ooh, i know i know i i like to screenshot these so i can look at them closer later but definitely it would be lovely if you share them online too yeah. and if you don't share on uh, a social media send us send us something through email we love to see them so yes i got those all thank you so so very much yeah so send this post it share it on instagram i think uh we we can reshare it and spread some joy to everybody during this holiday okay. any enough. closing thoughts suhita no thank you all this was an extra we just decided everybody a lot of people are home in lots of parts of the world it seemed really long to not see you from november till january uh, so i hope you enjoyed this as much as we did and we haven't put out our email for our next lab so it's not like you missed something but you should hear from us towards either the end of december or very early in january we'll we'll put out the first dates as soon as we get those first few sessions wrapped up so until we see you next time stay well happy stay holidays well. Happy stay warm yeah keep sketching keep playing see you very soon bye bye